discussing the issues that make Phoenix a world-class city. Now, on the issues. Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Councilman Jim Waring. I'm pleased to have with me today a very special guest, Cindy McCain. Welcome to the show, Cindy, and thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate sure. it. We're talking about human trafficking today. I'm just curious, how did you get involved with this issue? Well, you know, it, things happen for different reasons and events happen in your life, and I had an experience that changed me forever, and then we now have an opportunity to do something about it. But I was working, had just finished some stuff in Calcutta, India, and I was actually shopping in a little kiosk that sold saris, for mm -hmm. my, and I was buying it for my daughter. and. I heard this kind of clucking and cluttering underneath the floorboards of the building and I asked the gentleman and he said, oh, it's my family. Mm -hmm. Not unusual. I could totally understand a family living below the, the shop. And as we were finishing up, I looked, kind of looked down and I, you could kind of see through the floorboards a little bit. It, not big, but mm -hmm. enough to where you could see movement and see people. And there were at least 30 little eyes looking up at me mm -hmm. and it, they were little girls. and. I, it clicked with me that there was something wrong going on there and that it was bad, number two. And, but th the downside to it, for me anyway, was is that I walked out and I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't do one thing. I didn't know what to do. Uh, and so that has haunted me for years now. It's, that was a number of years ago. And uh, it's wonderful now that we have the opportunity to do something. Well, you certainly are doing something. You just got back from New York, the Super Bowl. We're taping this, of course, mm -hmm. but the Super Bowl was just played the uh, last couple days. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience there? Are things mm -hmm. improving? Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a lot more interest in this issue. There's a great deal of interest in it now, which is wonderful for the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, New York and, and New Jersey were working together seamlessly. It was, it was really remarkable. Uh, their, one of their first and foremost issues was human trafficking. and. Governor Christie made it very clear that this would not be tolerated in any shape, mm -hmm. not just around the Super Bowl, but in years to come. Well, that's excellent because, yeah. you know, in the past, obviously this was not an issue. I'm chairing the city's human mm -hmm. trafficking task force, mm -hmm. and it's not an issue with which I was very familiar. Mm -hmm. I think, and we've talked prior yeah. to this, about how people don't really believe this happens yeah. in the United States of America. I know. And, you know, I know you're trying to change some hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. I think the last article I saw with you, and it was in the Sunday's mm -hmm. paper, talking about this issue. Mm -hmm. It's the number two uh, organized crime is. issue in the world next mm -hmm. to drug trafficking, mm -hmm. which shocked me. Mm -hmm. You know, so much of it's social media driven. Mm -hmm. I know you focused a little bit on that. You want to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what people do online and how this works? It's just, it was staggering it, to me. It's awful. It's, oh, it's just, unbelievable. It's mind boggling. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this industry, and that's exactly what it is, it, is, it has become, like you said, number two. It is easier to traffic a human being mm -hmm. than it is drugs. I, I mean, which I, could, I couldn't believe yeah. it when I first heard that. Uh, first, of, first of all, we're start, we want to educate people. We want the, the people of Arizona to understand that this not only exists, but it's right in your neighborhood. Uh, it is something that you have seen but didn't recognize. So our job, one of our jobs, is to educate people, uh, to train people, train some of our workers, our, our Uber drivers, our cab drivers, mm -hmm. our airline people, our hotel people, uh, the, the airport in general, the volunteers that are coming around the Super Bowl, uh, to train them as what to look for. This is not starting a vigilante force. Mm -hmm. This is training people to understand what they're seeing and giving them the ability to, to report it. Um, if, regarding Backpage, which is what I know you're alluding to is the online portion of this, uh, Craigslist got it right. They stopped all, their, all of their online uh, sex trafficking kinds of stuff uh, on their website. They just stopped it altogether. I wish Backpage would do the same. Uh, it is a very lucrative business. The owners live right here in Arizona. And, uh, you know, they, they, have, they have enabled people to hurt young women and young children. So our, we're going to make an attempt to see what we can do from a state level on, on the issue of Backpage and how we can stop this and maybe encourage them to, to not do this, to, do, to follow Craigslist's lead and take it off their website. Well, you partnered with Governor Brewer last yeah. year and County Attorney Bill Montgomery mm -hmm. on a bill. It got yeah. held up in committee last year, mm -hmm. but after talking to you earlier, mm -hmm. it sounds like you're optimistic this year the bill optimistic. might go through and really make some difference. You want to yeah. talk a little bit about what's in the bill? Yeah, I'm very optimistic about this. The governor's task force, we reported back to the governor 
on our with our recommendations and she heard every one of them and she she incorporated all of them we have a good piece of legislation hopefully coming down and I'm very very hopeful and and believe that it will it will pass mm -hmm. I really am well, I think it's supposed to be heard in committee I think we said this Thursday mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. by the time viewers see this yeah. they probably will have read in the paper whether it passed or it didn't yeah. but it again with the bill sponsor chairing the committee you know I yeah. think everybody's optimistic that, that it'll go through this year mm -hmm. I just, I can't emphasize to our audience enough, you know, I think the average age, I believe this is a national mm -hmm, statistic, mm -hmm. is 14 mm -hmm. with the average start age mm -hmm. of the girls we're talking about at 12. 12 right. So while people may see them as the criminals, for me, I'm looking more at the traffickers and the oh, johns, yeah. the people who procure the services. Most it makes me important. very angry about mm -hmm. the premeditated nature of this, mm -hmm. that you're ordering up girls like room service. Mm -hmm. It's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And for my part, we'd like to make sure it's not acceptable in Arizona. Absolutely. You know, I think the city of Phoenix, is, uh, we're so grateful that you mm -hmm. are gung-ho on this mm -hmm. and that you're going to make, make sure that the city of Phoenix, mm -hmm. as well as the state, are flyovers, flyover areas. We're not going to tolerate this. Uh, we need some creative thinking on this. We need some thoughts on... Uh, just what we do with our with our customers, mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, certainly, the traffickers. Our the bill that we hope passes very soon attacks the traffickers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, yeah, it, I think together uh, with the governor and with certainly our mayor and you all on the, and your task force on this, we're going to be uh, we're going to have a good solid state with regards to human trafficking. Well, as you talked about the flyover state, yeah. we don't want you committing these kind of horrendous acts no. somewhere else. But we certainly don't want you to commit here in our backyard right. as a Phoenix councilman. All right. we can really control is Phoenix, and obviously you're working with the state. Right. But it's just when you read about people doing this, people yeah. who are coming here for events, it's not all about, it's not to impugn the Super Bowl no. Or, no. or the golf right. tournaments or the all-star games or anything else. Right. But what we found in our task force is that this crime travels follows transportation. You have a good mm -hmm. transportation system mm -hmm. close to a border. You got good weather. You have these big events. You know, those are all positive things. And it yeah. pained me to no end to see that there was a downside, really, in this yeah. case, hurting young women. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. So. Well, it, and, and like we said, we are not looking at just the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl mm -hmm. is, is a catalyst. It's a big catalyst. Mm -hmm. But we have Arizona so popular with people coming and events and everything. This has to be a long-term project. Mm -hmm. It's something, something that we will, will live with, the, the ability to stop this, and we can live with this for a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, it is really, really important that these that everyone in the state work together on this. Mm -hmm. We're very proud here in Phoenix. We dedicate more officers than most big cities yes, in the country. Do. I believe yes, it was do. 17 full-time officers plus a couple mm -hmm. command positions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, dealing with what has, I guess, traditionally been called vice. Right. And we're trying to end you know, human trafficking here in Arizona. Right. You know, over a three-year period, they made about 2,500 arrests. Right. Only about 300 of those were Johns. And mm -hmm. frankly, I'd like to see that figure yeah. up. Because if you don't have a clientele, right. then there's really no reason right. to kidnap or procure young women, uh, and the money will have to flow elsewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we really, uh, we're really looking at this as a way to beef up our efforts mm -hmm. to educate the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Indianapolis, when they had the Super Bowl, they had 68 arrests, mm -hmm. and it's just hard to believe that 68 business leaders or people who could afford a Super Bowl ticket might come to the game mm -hmm. and then want to do this. Right. You mm -hmm. talked about the hotels. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're very excited on our uh, committee yeah, to have their support. Yeah, you guys are doing a good job on that. Yeah, and make sure that you you talked earlier about not being vigilantes, but they're doing a training out at the airport. Right. Mm -hmm. So that the people, you know, that's the first point of contact right. for a lot of this flying these girls in. Mm -hmm. If you see something that seems strange, we've mm -hmm. often said, at least in my mm -hmm. public statements, but also on the show, with fire and police department, if you think you're having a heart attack. Call, call and if you're not right. worry about later. if you see something strange in your neighborhood call. in a van and there's mm -hmm. been a break-in before call you know what would you say to people who want to help well on as this you issue? as you know clear channel uh, donated mm -hmm. to the to the city of phoenix uh 50 digital billboards and there are 15 running at any one time uh there a huge amount of people will mm -hmm. see this monthly call that 800 number if mm -hmm. it, if you think something's going on it's okay to call because from the 800 number, that will be disseminated out where it should be, where it should go, and then the local authorities can check it out. Uh, we don't want people ch doing, checking it out on their own. I mean, that's not the mm -hmm. point of this. The point is, be alert, be aware. If you think it's going on, report it. And that's why hotel workers mm -hmm. and airport workers, they mm -hmm. see something, but they have to have the training to kind of know right. what they're looking for. Right. We're doing the same thing in my, in my family company mm -hmm. uh, with our drivers. We're educating them on because they're in bars and restaurants every day, and we're educating them on what to look for, what they're seeing, mm 
mm -hmm. uh, what you know just anything that looks strange if it if you if your gut tells you something's wrong mm -hmm. then probably is something wrong you know, they always say that on multiple choice yeah. tests you know, your first <laughs> answer is probably right <laughs> and unfortunately in this yeah. you know if something if that doesn't seem like the fellow's yeah. daughter if that just doesn't look yeah, right doesn't to look you right, yeah. you know go ahead and say something nobody's going to criticize not, you traffickers later. aren't always men right uh, there's a lot of female traffickers out there too so uh, you know you just what it's does if it doesn't look right then mm -hmm. report it you know and stay away from it but report it well I was at the press conference where the clear channel effort was announced yeah. you know really pleased about that can't thank yeah. them enough for their oh, efforts yeah. getting that number out there so that people mm -hmm. if they see something they got to have a place to call right. uh, besides the police main number and right. so we're gonna work on beefing up our efforts to get the number and the information right. out to folks right. we really appreciate your work on this effort oh, traveling you. all over the country <laughs> dealing with different state legislators yeah. and so it's forth been, it's been really fun and uh, by the end of all of this, I, I truly believe that uh, our nation will be collectively together on this and a very, very, will present a firm front mm -hmm. to these guys, these bad guys, and they won't, they won't do that here. Well, I know you talked about in the U.S. Senate that's becoming the case, and you it is, probably yeah. would have some insider yeah, information on exciting. what's going on in the U.S. Senate. So, <laughs> There's so. some strong legislation coming forward. So we're there. hoping this is the first step yeah, in the process. it is. Well, thanks so much, Cindy. We really appreciate your willingness to be on the show and talk about this extremely important issue. And if you have any questions or comments, please call my office at 602-262-7445 or visit my website, phoenix.gov slash district2. And we'll see you next time on The Issues.